kids, my name is Caroline and I've been studying Phyllis Wheatley for a project at school. I want to share some of what I've learned. Some parts of this story are kind of scary, but it's important to learn about history, even the sad parts. You probably already know that Phyllis was born around 1753 in some part of West Africa. It's hard to know where exactly because when she was only seven or eight, she was kidnapped and sold into slavery. She survived a rough and horrible trip across the Atlantic Ocean and suffered a sickness that would affect her health the rest of her life. She arrived in Boston on a ship called the Phyllis in 1761, and that's how she came to be named Phyllis. And she was given the last name Wheatley after the family who were her new enslavers. So far, this is a pretty sad story, and I think Phyllis must have been pretty brave. Despite all these challenges, Phyllis proved herself to be an incredibly smart child. Within 16 months of arriving in Boston, she was fluent in English. She began learning Latin at age 12 and probably wrote her first poem when she was only 13. By age 14, she started to publish poems regularly and soon became a little bit of a mini celebrity in Boston. She would visit prominent families and talk about various subjects with some of the most educated people in Boston. When she was 17, she wrote the poem that gave her fame. The poem was for a minister that died. The minister was actually Joseph Sewall, the fourth senior minister at Old Self Church, where Phyllis soon was baptized and became a member. The poem was published in the American colonies and later it was published in London. But Phyllis was having trouble finding a publisher who would print her book of poems. Despite her celebrity, many people didn't believe that a black enslaved woman could have written her poems. They thought Phyllis was lying, so she took a test to prove herself. She met with Thomas Hutchinson, who was the governor at the time, John Hancock, and 16 more powerful men who asked Phyllis about history, literature, and asked her to translate Greek and Latin. They were all so impressed that they even wrote in her unpublished book that she did indeed write all of the poems, but she still couldn't find a publisher. She decided to go to England searching for a publisher, and she finally found someone willing to publish her book. Her book was published in 1773. It was called Poems on Various Subjects, Religious and Moral, 250 Years Ago This Year. One thing I love about Phyllis's story is that even though she was an ens enslaved and not able to attend school, the Wheatleys encouraged her to learn. Each night they gave Phyllis a candle to keep by her bedside in case she got an idea for a poem and wanted to write it down. Phyllis Wheatley was brave. Even through all the sorrow, she worked hard and made herself be seen. When no one wanted to publish her book, she didn't give up. She wasn't allowed to go to school, but she persisted, and her and the rest of the Wheatleys made sure that she got an education, even if she could not go to school. Many people did not believe that she wrote the poems, so she took a test to prove herself. She had a rough childhood, but she did not let it bring down her future. From the beginning of her life to the end, she showed strength of character in every second and proved that you can do anything you put your mind to. Phyllis Wheatley may no longer be a part of this world, but there is no doubt that her life will be remembered for years to come. Perhaps next time you find yourself in a hard spot, you'll think about her story and not let challenges keep you down and maybe leave a light on for the next time creativity hits. Will you pray with me? Dear God, thank you for stories that inspire. Thank you for Phyllis Wheatley, for her bravery and for her poems. May we find strength in her story and keep telling it always. We pray this in the name of Jesus, and we all say, Amen.